of smartness when I say that. The subject has to do with it being deep. Okay. <laughs> I thought, wow, he's really, he really thinking good about himself. Uh, not so. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. So you remember all the good things that God has done and said, spoken through this conference. Today we'll deal a good bit with the ministry. We love the ministry, do we not? If you've got a preacher that tells you the truth, thank God for it. Amen. And, and sometimes, sometimes it's going to cross you. It's going, to, it's going to challenge you. It's going to be different than what you feel. But uh, conviction is the dearest friend that I have. When I go to conferences and I hear preaching and I am convicted... Remember, that's the dearest friend you've got. Because no man can come to God except he is drawn. And that drawing is a terrible feeling. I've preached a message ever since I was 12, year old, 12 years old. It's my annual message, and that is past feeling. That when you get where you can't feel that conviction anymore, God won't deal with you anymore. You're through. And uh, the text uh, that I use on there is, I therefore testify in the Lord that you don't walk as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having their understanding darkened and they're alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto looseness to work all uncleanness with greediness but you did not learn Christ that way. Say, praise the Lord. Thank God I can still feel the presence of the Lord. Amen. I can still feel the presence of the Lord. Let me read today from uh, 1 Corinthians A. 1 Corinthians, if you will. 1 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. And I will have a good bit of uh, reading, not on this scripture, but on another one and that you may want to listen to the difference uh, that the uh, translation makes because I am, I am uh, giving a very literal translation. All right? Uh, most Bibles that are printed now are given for the ease of understanding. Okay? Most of you, and they're paraphrases. They're not literal. The literal is harder to understand. It is not easy to understand but you get the real essence of the words. All right. So let a man think of us like this. Fourth chapter, first verse. Let a man think of us like this, as under rowers of Christ and as house managers of the mysteries of God. And from now, the rest of it, uh, it is sought in a house manager that he be faithful. But it is the very smallest thing to me that I am judged by a human day or by a man's day. That's a small thing to me. Neither do I examine myself. I, don't, I do not know anything against myself. But uh, in this I am not made righteousness, but the one who has examined me is the Lord. So that uh, before you judge anything, you don't judge anything before it times, until the Lord shall come, who will light up the hidden things of the darkness and shine his will and so forth. The first part is what I wanted you to notice. Let a man think of us, this is the ministry, let him think of us like this, that we are under roars and we are house managers of the mysteries of God. Everybody say, Lord, bless your word. You may be seated. Proper way, there's a proper way to think of the ministry, two ways, he said. The first one is the, is the most humble position. He was a slave down in the bottom of the trireme, the ship. 
And his job, he was a slave. He was chained in place. He had to stay there. I don't care if he got sick. I don't care what happened to him. And, and he rode to the pounding of a gavel. He had to keep time. As the gavel, there was one man that sat and pounded the gavel. That gavel kept them rowing in time. A slave who does nothing more than just listen for them to keep him in time, keep it right, and for him to row. He was a slave. He was an under rower. Let a man think of us, the ministry like this, that we are under rowers of Christ. Then switches the metaphor completely, not to a slave, but he is actually a servant still, but now he is elevated. He is a house manager. The word comes from oikos, which is house, nomius, which comes from law. House manager of the mysteries of Christ. Now, a house manager was not the master of the house, but he was next to him. He saw to the running of the household, to the caring of the finances of the household, to the tutoring of the children of the household. He was the pedagogues, from which you get the word pediatrician. He took them to school. He paddled them when they were bad. He taught them right and wrong. Everything that had to do with that house and that home, he was over it, under the master of the house. In other words, the business in, the operation, keeping it straight, was left up to the house manager. All right? So he says, we are not just slaves rowing in the bottom of a ship that moves this boat along. Thank God you wouldn't move it along if you didn't have the ministry. And that dedicated ministry... I wanted to holler so bad last night and Brother Foster was preaching about him giving what he had planned for vacation, putting it into the church, and then how God blessed him. We all liked that real good, but I wanted to holler out real bad. Yeah, but the preacher was faithful. Yeah. Amen. He keeps it moving. He's the one that keeps the thing moving. But the other metaphor is that he is a manager. But it's not just the church house that he is managing, but he is managing the mysteries of God. Did you get that? I give you today for the sake of remembering managers of the mysteries. Praise God. Amen. He is a manager of the mysteries. What are those mysteries that we are talking about? We know some mysteries that are mentioned, but the subject he is on, if you'll flip back a page to the second chapter, and I'll read rather lengthy. Will you listen to me? Nod your head, Jacob Bush, and say that you will. Okay, appreciate that. I need that. I'm not asking you to run the aisle. Just shake your bush and, and, and all of that. I understand people are listening, and, and, um, um, and that, that's understandable. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, we are, that's the sixth verse, second chapter. I start reading there. Listen to me, children. We are speaking a wisdom in those who are perfected, not a wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age, which passes away. But we are speaking a wisdom of God in a mystery which has been hidden, which was foreknown or God foreknew before the ages into our glory, splendor and brilliance. No one, not one of the rulers of this world has known this mystery. For if they had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But just as it is written, I have not seen, 
ear hath not heard, and it has not come upon the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. But it is revealed. God has revealed them unto us through His Spirit. We quote that Scripture, I have not seen, ears not heard, but we forget to quote it, but it has been revealed to us through His Spirit. Praise God. Because the Spirit searches all things told you deep even the deep things of God are you listening the deep things of God for we what part of a man knows the things of a man except the spirit of a man what part of you knows you really except the spirit of a man. And thus, what are the things of God does anyone know except the spirit of God? It's the only thing that knows the things of God, the spirit of God. And we do not have the spirit, of, we have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is out of God, in order that we may know the things uh, which has gracefully been given to us by God. And we are speaking things which are not taught according to man's wisdom, but words in, taught in the Spirit. And here's what we do. We compare spiritual things to spiritual people. There's no use talking to them about spiritual things to people that are not spiritual. They can't get it. But you have, first of all, spiritual thing is neuter. Then you have uh, spiritual, which is masculine, men. We teach spiritual things or we compare. We put them together. We take spiritual things and we compare them with spiritual people. All right? And uh, that, uh, the comparison goes on. The solical of man has not received the spiritual from God. They are foolish to him, neither is able to receive them because they are spiritually examined. Listen to this. It's a lengthy reading, but it's good. A solical man cannot receive the spiritual things because they are spiritually examined. And the spirit examines everything, but cannot, no one can examine it. It examines everything, but the spiritual man himself cannot be examined by anybody. Praise God. Now that's rather, that's rather deep. That's why we need managers of the mysteries. Thank God. Everybody say managers of the mysteries. Praise God. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual people. He names some of them, and he said to us, Ear, not heard, I am not seen, ear, not heard, the things that God has prepared for them that love him. And, uh, and we say, oh, well, we've heard that a lot of times. But from now on, when you read something the apostle is quoting from the Old Testament, Go back and read about all of it, all right? And we will find out some very strange things. Paul is very fond of taking the Old Testament and proving to you it is for us. This world today says that's in the Old Testament. It doesn't belong to us. Hmm, that's not true. Let me give you an example. Paul's teaching on tithes. Tithes in 1 Corinthians. And uh, he is on the subject. He said, Is it not written that you shall not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn? Then you ask a rhetorical question in Greek, and uh, it expects a negative answer. Did God say that because he likes cows? That's the way he translated it. 
And you would say, of course not. But it was written entirely for us. Here is an Old Testament scripture that has to do with how you're uh, threshing grain with a cow and you got a rule where you don't put a muzzle on old Bessie where she can't take a bite. But he said that wasn't even written for them. They didn't know what that meant at all in a spiritual sense. It was just a rule they had to follow. He said, did God write that because he likes cows? Of course not. He said it was written entirely for us that we who plow in hope should be partakers of that hope. Amen. Glory. Brother, that's the truth you ought to write on your cuff and never forget it because that's the way. Let me tell you what it is. Everything in that Old Testament is written for us. It is a shadow of a pattern of worship that is going on in heaven right now. The Bible says it is a shadow. Did you know there's worship going on in heaven right now? Worship is going on. And Jesus taught Jesus. Jesus taught us to pray. That's uh, old Brother McLean used to pray every morning. He'd get up and have that old nightcap on. He'd kind of flop, flop down chair and say, Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. I'll never forget it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right. But here we have uh, the spectacle of a man saying something from the Old Testament to say that's entirely for us. Worship going on in heaven. Jesus said, this is the way you pray. Let your will be done on earth just like it's being done in heaven. You know how the will of God is being done in heaven. It's being done totally. It's being done completely. It's being done cheerfully. It is being done with worship. It is being done with reference. We ought to teach everybody and pray, God, let your will be done right here on earth, just like it's been done in heaven. Amen. If I had time, we had time, I could show you so many scriptures in the Old Testament that he says, this is for us. Written totally for us. Entirely for us. Amen. Oh, well, one of, uh, can I just mention one? Just, uh, just, uh, just, everybody just hold up one finger and I'll, and, and if you see me going on another thing, well, you, you, can, you can hold up zero and say my time's through, you know. But I generally ask the question, what sin did Jesus commit that brought the curse of the law upon him, Paul said, so that you and I could be delivered from the curse of the law. He who knew no sin became sin that we might, uh, that he might receive the curse of sin and we might be delivered. Which one was that? Anybody know? You got it. Cursed is the man that is hanging on a tree. Now that was a strange law. And it's two verses from the one that says, A woman shall not wear that which pertains to a man. <laughs> All right. Just two verses. <laughs> you, you didn't hear that. Just act like you didn't hear that because somebody would be doing this away. The next thing, you, your one's over with. <laughs> really, but, but really, 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 it's saying if a man commits a crime that is worthy of death, and you hang him on a tree, you shall not leave him hanging all night, because this is God. It is abomination to God, or God is blamed. Now, from the, from the Jewish teachings uh, of that, they call that the king's reproach. Because God is reproached for a man hanging on a tree all night long. In the uh, Midrash and the Mishnah and the Targums, we are taught by the Jews the reason that that was so bad, the reason that God was reproached is because you take the creature that is in the likeness of God, the one that is made in his image and likeness, the highest creature in God's order of beings, and you hang him on a tree which is the highest order of plant life. 
and God is reproached. That happened with Jesus Christ. He created a tree, but they hung him on a tree. You see why it was totally a shame. Amen. Praise God. Say, praise God. Praise God. Uh, I can go on and on and on. Trees and plants cure man. One of those trees was a tree of life. You never get sick. You never die. I am a believer that there is in plants and there is there are in, uh, there is in trees a a healing for everything that can go wrong with man. But he said, you take this man that is the highest order of God's creation and you hang him on a tree which is the highest order of plant life and God is reproached by that. Don't reproach God. God is concerned with how you treat man. Don't bring him down in the mully grubs. Don't treat him like he's come. Amen. You made him like I said a little yesterday from Elohim. I got to go. Got to go. Oh, hallelujah to God. But I want to give you one. This other, this scripture that he referred to, that uh, I have not seen, ear hath not heard. Let me read to you from the Hebrew, that which surrounds it. It says, oh, that you would tear the heavens in two, that you would come down that the mountains would melt down to the level at your presence. And when the melting fire, we find out it is not uh, going to happen, but it had already happened. When the melting fire was burning and all the fire caused the waters to boil, when you identified and pointed out your enemy, who was that? Ben Shakar. That's when you did tremendous things which we have not searched for, when you came down, the heaven would have melted down to a level at thy presence. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, I have not seen, neither has it entered the heart of man which God, which things God has prepared. But the words before that tells you, thank God, that what man never has seen and what they have never heard is how this thing all started in the beginning. And the terrible fire and the boiling water and the leveling of mountains at the present of God. Oh, brother, the managers of the mysteries of God. Amen. When he says we are managers of the mysteries of God and says these things that have never heard, never seen, but have been revealed to unto us by the Spirit opens the door to us. We ought to be going not only frontward what's lying ahead for us, but we ought to be going backward what God has done for us. Search His Word and study the mysteries of God. Hallelujah. Because we are the house Managers of the mysteries of God. Uh, I told you, and I, I said for the reason of clarification of this scripture, these scriptures, I am beginning the study of uh, Sumerian, and uh, only a few men on earth are able to read it. I've begun that study, and uh, the reason that I'm intensely interested because Sumerian is the oldest culture and civilization of man and we have prolific writers from that time they made cylinder discs they wrote and printed uh, uh, in fact we are just now returning to the knowledge that they had I tell everybody the Sumerians were able to correctly identify and name the planets of our solar system from the outside inward the reason is is because they were taught by the Nephilim in Genesis 6, those who fell from heaven, angels which kept not their first estate. Amen. But the Sumerians tell us which is the account of how the world was made, are you following me, of the fallen angels. They were there. They saw creation. They even tell us about Eden and Adam. They have their own story. They tell about it. Remember, it's fallen angels, but some of it had to be correct. Amen. At least the devil said you'll eat this thing and know it's, you know, good and evil. He is right. But uh, uh, actually, earth was called Tiamat, which means in Sumerian, a watery planet. There is a huge planet 
that enters our solar system, according to the Sumerians, every 3,600 years. And that is where God Enlil to them lives. On one of those passes billions of years ago, Nibiru with Enlil passed around and was coming around Tiamat, which was a water completely covered with water. One of the satellites of Tiamat or, or of uh, Nibiru struck Tiamat and busted it in half and drug part of it out into space as the firmament. And the teacher in Sumerian said, I want you to translate from the Hebrew what the word firmament means. It means the hammered bracelet. So it, it busted earth, it became earth, water rushed to one side, and that was, uh, and I read here in Isaiah where God uh, is speaking through Isaiah and is saying the same thing. Oh God, you came down to this earth. The mountains got level. Thank God. All of the waters started boiling when your presence was there. Amen. When you did that, fire came down and boiled the water. Then you identified your enemy as Ben Shakar. That's when you did tremendous things, which things we have not searched for. When you came down, you melted the level, uh, melted everything to at the level at your presence. Since the beginning of the world, men have not heard. Oh, praise God. What are you telling me, Brother Trace? I'm telling you that there is more in this word. We are told in Isaiah exactly how God busted this world and how everything got level and the waters boiled and he did tremendous things. Praise God. But I tell you what, he knows the end from the beginning. Praise God. You and I are not to run around in just a little pool, but we are to spread out and we are to know Thank God, because we are the managers of the mysteries of Christ. He said, what do we do? He said, a, a solical man, psukekos, a solical man cannot know the things of God because they are spiritually examined. Now somebody says, what's a solical man? Three parts to a man. We know body, soul, and spirit. But... I tell you what I did. I took each one of those and I put under scriptures what belongs to them from the original word, what each one has. All right, do you want to know? Okay, I'll give it to you. In the spirit, in the spirit you have conscience, communication, and intuition. In a man's soul, there is intellect, volition, the will to act, and emotion. Praise God. All right. Let me tell you how it works. I'll tell you what a solical man is. You can come in here today or tonight and the Holy Ghost move on you if you're a spiritual person and God can reveal something. It don't have to be the end of the world. It can be just I love you and I bless you and it, it'll make you shout all over the place. Thank God. He speaks to your spirit. What part of a man does God address when he talks with us? The scripture says it is our spirit that he addresses. Thank God. And you learn in your spirit. Oh, you shout, praise God, that's wonderful. I learned something good. Hallelujah to God. You liked it so much, you say, tomorrow night, well, hello, 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 hello. Off and on, off and on, off and on. I, I, can, I can read Hebrew, but I can't read English. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You come in, you come in the next day and you say, I want to shout, I want to feel just like I did yesterday. Now let's see, what was I doing? I was saying glory, glory, glory when I got blessed like that. All right, glory, 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 glory. Not exactly like it, I don't feel exactly like it, but I'm going to act like it anyhow. Glory, 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 glory. Amen. There's a lot of worship yeah. that is solical. Yeah. Right. Intellect, you remember it? Emotion, you want the same feeling? Yeah. And volition, the will to act, you can, you can put it in force. Right. But it's not spiritual. Thank God. That's right. The solical man cannot examine the spiritual things of God. You know, what 
things know a man, what part of me knows me except the Spirit? Then he says, what things know the Spirit of God except the Spirit of God? Do you mean to tell me you're going to take your spirit, your solical experience, and you're going to examine the things of God? Mm -mm. No, no, no. There's only one way to do that's not coming and say, okay, Lord, I want to do like I did last night. Praise God. Amen. I started out with Acts 2.38. Then I got in gear. Praise God. In Revelations where it talks about us rapturing. And, and, and that's the line. So, so glory, 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 glory. And I'm going to, and, and I'm going to build and I'm going to, I'm going to get into it. And, and finally somebody beats a drum fast enough. And, and I, 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 am, I have no criticism for anybody or anybody's worship. I'm just like everybody else. I'm made out of the same mud. You know what I mean? And somebody said, there's certain things that does me good. There's certain things that does certain part of you good, and you don't know what part of it is really doing good. But to get the things from God, amen, it is not your soul. It is not what you know up here. You've got to go back to the Spirit. You've got to pray and say, Lord, amen, come down. Send your presence down here and teach me. Hallelujah to God. i got to get a new revelation. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank God. Yeah. I'm telling you, and, I, and, and it's not condemnatory. It is not, it is not picking on every, anybody. But we need, as house managers, preachers, to be very careful what we let people call spiritual revelation and spiritual blessing and what we know is a solical makeup and a solical emotional exaggeration and we get into that. It'll make you feel good. It'll do all right. But you haven't learned the depth of God. Amen. You haven't learned the depth of God. Oh, it should be our prayer. Lord, come down from the heavens. Hallelujah. Bust it again like you busted it before. Hallelujah. Lay everything level. Let me see it just like it was. Hey, I am such a creature that I can't be satisfied with just standing up here being the MD trees. I want to know more about him. I want to know more. Thank God. I'd like to think I'm like Simon Peter and that like all human beings. When they saw Jesus walking on the water that night, they, Peter said they thought it was a phantasma. The word has ghosts there, but the word is a fantasy. A fantasia. They thought it was a fantasy, him walking. And this is what you did not know. But he wished to pass them by. He wasn't going to notice them. He wanted to pass them by. He was on another business. They were in a boat. He was walking. It may, I was teaching that the other Sunday. I said, I wonder how many times he walked that water like that. I mean, when it just come time, he took a notion, he just walked on it. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Thank God, this is no different. He was going to pass him by. He was just on a trip. And they happened to be out there rowing and trying to, and having a hard time of it. And, 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 oh, and Peter saw him and, and said, Lord... Uh, I want to do that. They had the craziest desire. I'd like to do that too. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Uh, everybody else was, was cooking their fingers and said, you better not try it. You'll go down. But the strange thing about man is God did something that's like God. I want to do like that. Thank God. He slung his leg over the boat. There was one little bit of caution that he had before he stepped out on the water. He knew he couldn't say anything himself that would make it happen. He told Jesus, he said, you asked me to come to you. If you ask me, it'll work. <laughs> He's, Jesus said, come on. <laughs> and he slid off and he walked. And if I'd have been him, I'd have turned around and looked at everybody back in the boat and said, uh-huh. <laughs> he walked on it until he felt the wind and the waves and he started to go down. And he, the shortest prayer don't, sometimes it has to be long. I mean, sometimes sometime it's, it's an emergency. There's three words, Lord, save me. 
Amen. And the Lord reached down and got his hand. Now, I don't believe that he drug Peter back to the boat through the water. I don't believe he said, hold your nose, Peter. Here we go. Amen. I believe he stood him back up on top and he walked back to the boat. Praise God. Oh, there's something about me. When I see him do things, I want to do things. I am not satisfied to just stay in this realm. I want to move out of this realm. I want to do like God. There's something about me that's eternal. There's something about me that reaches for the unknown. Woo. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Thank God. You may be satisfied as a house manager of the mysteries just to talk about God is one but that's not the only mystery hallelujah what did that one God do what can he do what can I do because I'm like him how much can I know praise God how much can I know there is no end to what you can know it depends on how far you want to go Oh, praise God. Everybody say, managers of the mystery. He, the spiritual man, can examine everything, but he cannot himself be examined. He'll never figure him out. He's in a different realm altogether. Somebody said he ain't better than anybody else, just to God. As far as men's concerned, he doesn't seem quite as good as anybody else. But to God, he's something else. Once again, I tell you, the best thing about you and I is not how we look or how we sing or how our personality is so pleasant. The best thing about us is how well we can pray. No wonder when they wanted something, he taught on it the other night, Lord, teach us. Not how to teach, not how to heal people teach us to pray because I tell you that is the door that is the way to get there from here from being a solical man generating through emotion and volition and intellect generating some mimicking or some spiritual attitude he can come down in every service and give you a different revelation of the mystery of God and you won't know how to handle it. And it don't have... Hey, there's folks think there's only one way that God blesses you and that's with a full head of steam. That's with joy. I'm telling you, joy is not the first one. Praise God. There is righteousness which is a sense of being right and peace. Oh, praise God for peace. And the Bible calls it peace that passes up anybody's ability to understand it. Hallelujah. And then this joy. Thank God. These are the things in the Holy Ghost. Uh, I, could, I can have a time right here. I mean, I've moved along right here until where I could just help myself and have a good time. But I'm interested today in getting you to come with me. Come on in and let's look at the min mysteries of God. Here are among us men who are the managers of the mystery. When it comes to tongues, the Bible said we're not speaking unto men, but we're speaking unto God. Hallelujah. And in the Spirit, we're speaking mysteries. Then later on he said, pray for me that a door of words will be open. I, I've got it, but I can't tell it. Pray for me that a door of words will be open to me that I can make known the mysteries of God. You want to know what to pray for about your preacher? Oh, no, don't make him smarter, Lord. Huh. Don't make him more handsome. Don't make him more richer. Well, pray that sometime. But, but pray, God, open a door of words. 
to him. Hallelujah to God. Because that man knows he's managing these things. And he needs a door of words to open to him where he can put everything here. And he can compare spiritual things with spiritual people. This belongs there. And this belongs there. Have you got the secret today? Woo! Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, it's not only, he said, things which have happened, but the things that are prepared for you and I already. My mind goes wild with that. What kind of a body we're going to have. I talked to you a little bit about it the other day. Will we know one another, et cetera, et cetera. What, kind, what are we going to do? Just float through air all the time? No, he tells us what we're going to do. Praise God. It's in the book. It's all in the book. And we need to get it out. We need to study it out. And thank God. And that way we can be sure of what we're talking. Now, criticisms of the church come from the world. And they think we're trying to regulate men's lives by standards. That is the farthest thing from the truth. Amen? There are certain things we have that's called convictions. And strangely, the Spirit of God does the same for one like He does for another. I went into an architect's office one time. The, uh, the uh, receptionist said, Reverend Treese, uh, I understand that uh, you don't let your women wear makeup. Is that true? I said, no, ma'am, that's not true. It's not true. I said, no, that's not true. She said, I understand that you won't let your women cut their hair. I said, that's not true either. Oh, she said, I misunderstood. I said, the whole world's misunderstood. We don't make anybody do anything. Hallelujah. Amen. If you only do something because I'm telling you to do something, it won't get you, brother. Uncle Jerry Osborne used to say six inches above the cooling board. You remember that? Ah, brother, it's got to be down on the inside your heart. I'm doing exactly what I want to do here today. Nobody's making me. I look like I look because I think this is the best I can look. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. No offense to anybody, but I'm not fixing to plaster and stitch and pull and dab and daub to make it look better. I'm sorry. You're the one that has to look at it, but I'm the one that has to live with it, okay? Amen. But I tell you what, there is to me an inside that's got to be pure and cleaned up. And he leads me and he tells me, and I want to be like him. I want to act like him. I want to look like him. I want to be modest in all things that I do and all things that I say. We, they call us legalists. Book has been written recently called Neo-Phariseeism. Hello? Do you know that book? I want to answer it today. Thank God. Right now I'm aggravated in my spirit. Because the world cannot examine us. The Bible says they can't. But it don't keep them from trying. Hallelujah. Amen. The scripture says again, the spiritual man can examine everything. But he himself can't be examined. So they begin to put their two cents worth on us. And I don't like it. They say you're legalists. Oh, fooey. That's my. I told one man that uh, was representative of the fellow that wrote the book, sent it to me. I said, this man wouldn't know a Pharisee if he was to walk up and hit him with his phylactery. That was a little, his little rule book that he carried around his wrist, a little book here. He wouldn't know him if he'd come up and hit him with his phylactery. And excuse the, uh, the actions that go along with it here. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Hmm. There were at the most, their largest, only 6,000 of them. They were not the largest group. The largest group was the Sadducees, which was a little more conservative as far as the word was concerned. 
What was a Pharisee? He was a man. You see, back in those times, they were big on commentaries. You had the Mishnah, which was a commentary on the law. Then you had the Talmud, which is a commentary on the Mishnah. And then you had other commentaries. It was commentaries on the commentaries on the commentaries and on the commentaries. And if I put them all together, the commentaries that the Pharisee had would reach from here to the end of the platform. Full of rules. Such as if you come in with an offering for the poor and you... Over here's an offering for the poor, offering over here for the priest. And you threw your offering and it landed... You have to measure the distance between each pot to see which one it really belongs in. Here's what Jesus said a Pharisee is. You praise me with your lips. God says you honor me with your lips. Please like, comment, and subscribe.